guys, my name's Tage. Welcome to Vortex and Metal. Ah, no, I'm kidding. But hey guys, it's uh, me, Ghost Boy. And I deleted all my CD collection videos because I think they kind of suck. I mean, I did them last year anyway, so it doesn't matter. But so I'm here to redo that. And I'm gonna be doing three parts of this, maybe four, probably three though. And because uh, I have three shelves of CDs along with a tiny like box, I guess, which is a separate collection. But that's for uh, uh, probably part three anyway. Yeah, um, like I said, I'm here to redo the CD collection videos, and this is part one of shelf one, or fuck, whatever. This is part one, and each part is going to be a different shelf. I'm doing the first shelf, which is A through G. Yeah. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. I didn't remember. Homesick. I, uh, actually, uh... What's it called? I don't know what they're called. Like, uh, sleeves, I think they're called? Or something like that? Fucking... Here, I'm gonna show you guys this. I cut the sleeve off, I think that's what it's called, and I taped it here, because I thought that looked better. So, yeah, I'm kind of an idiot. I did this when I was in... 8th or ninth grade? I have no idea. But... Not an issue. And plus a great album. Uh, what we got? What separates me from you? Probably the first album I... Well, this is the first time I ever gotten CD from Data Remember. And the first one I ever heard in its entirety. And it's, uh, still a banger. I, uh, and it's not pop punk. It is post hardcore. Get it straight. I'm in courtesy. This is, a uh, probably, probably my favorite Data Remember album. I'm not sure, though. This is, a uh, an interesting... See the uh, interesting booklet because see how it is. See? Oh, guess what? It's totally different. I don't know why it's made like this, but you know, doesn't matter. Still a banger of an album. Uh, like I said, might be my favorite Data Remember album. Big Eminem. And last for Data Remember, Bad Vibrations. Straight banger. Although, I, I have to use a bad song. I don't like that song. But still a banger nonetheless. I think that's it for a day to remember. Let's move on to the next band, which is... We got some classic rock coming up here. Uh, ACDC, Back in Black. Hmm. This is probably my favorite ACDC album. The banger. I don't really listen to classic rock anymore, but I still keep it in my collection because I still love the music. And you don't have to listen to it to love it. I listened to it back in the day, but it's just not really anymore. And now we got uh, All That Remains, The Order of Things. This is a... Uh, this was the first... This album actually introduced me to All That Remains. Which I think is kind of funny. Oh, shit. Let me uh, just think. I got a uh, notification. Just gonna get the payment of that. But as I'm introducing me to all that remains, and uh, the first song I heard from them was No Knock. That actually got me into them, and uh, that's why I have the CD. Got this when I was in eighth grade. I'm a young person, so, you know. Next. The Amity Affliction with Young Blood. Young Bloods. Damn it. Uh, also, I also have Glory Days, but I gave that to my brother. Because, being the dumbass I am, uh, and I also got this in 8th uh, grade, by the way, and the Glory Days, too. I did not listen to anything off that album before I put it on my Christmas list. Then, I, you know, once I got it, I listened to it, and I was like, this album sucks. But this, that's for a whole other video. So I gave it to my brother as a graduation gift, because he just graduated college this year. So, I'm satisfied with where it is now, though. This is a great album, though. I love this album. Emily Affliction is definitely in my top five favorite bands. Chasing Ghosts. Unfortunately, this is the original, not the deluxe. But it's okay. Pure Summer Vibes. This album is pure Summer Vibes. A lot of metalcore albums are, but... I think the Emily Affliction kind of takes it up a notch with that shit. It's showing my head not that much, but... Anyway, my last Emily Affliction CD, Misery. Got this for Christmas. Uh, definitely see why the... This album I wouldn't call metal. But... We don't need to talk about that. I do understand why a lot of people didn't like this album. Because it's... It's different, you know? 
it's not music wise it's not really something you would uh, expect from the MU potion but uh lots of more classic stuff we got anthrax spreading the disease still need to get among the living but this uh introduced me to anthrax when i was in like sixth grade basically i got into music well i got i started diving deep into music late in my life we got my fucking retard but here we also have for all kings I have worship music too, but I gave that to my brother. It's a good album, but meh. Just, I just don't really feel like keeping it in my collection. Alright, up next. Architects, Lost Together, Lost Forever. I got another notification. Let me just skip the book. My favorite Architects album, and also the album that introduced me to them. Uh, my first year, Grave Digger, my cousin introduced me to Grave Digger. I was like, oh shit. That's a good. That's a good song. I just checked out this album. I checked out the album and I was like, "Damn, that's a good album." Here, let me move the uh, move some shit. Spin this off my way. Put that later. But let's continue the collection. Um, all I got to abandon us. The last album to feature Tom. Sad. What's confusing is that it doesn't have the track listing on the back, which makes zero sense whatsoever. Because that's all our God's humble band in us. Because we totally didn't know that's what the album was anyway. Not saying? Not saying it's a good motherfucker with Dog Gear? Uh, holy hell. Same thing. Just, I don't get it. This is not my favorite album of 2018 anymore because I started, I found more music this year. But, that's not really good. But, Banger of an album. And it's great to see that they're still moving on without Tom. They're carrying out Tom's legacy, and there a lot of riffs on the album were written by Tom, too. Alright, next. Tilla, About That Life. Great album. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is weird. But, you know, their music is kind of weird, but I'm not mad at it. It's pretty... You gotta admit, Franz's vocal ranges are fucking sick. Whether you like them or not. So gotta admit that. And then, what's it got? Chaos. Probably not the only Attila albums I like, but the only ones I intend on getting CD. Uh, I intend on getting C in CD form. But, that's okay. Alright. Shit. I don't know what that, oh, that was. August Burns Red Constellations. My favorite August Burns Red album. I regret not seeing them on the 10 year anniversary of this tour. But my friend Joe told me that they play at the Starland Ballroom like every year, and they've been doing it since 2012. So hopefully next year I'll catch them. And hopefully they do it like early in the year too, that'd be great. And Phantom Anthem. I need more August Springs Red in my damn collection. So I got this at FYE a few months before it went out of business. Or the, the one near me went out of business. What the hell? Sorry about that, there's a, there's a bug on my camera. She fucking up here. But, so it's gonna be a good video. I'll show my question. Alright, batch. A bench sevenfold sounding the seven trumpet. This was another album I, uh, I think I, uh, got this before I listened to anything off of it. I listened to it and I was like, oh shit, I love it. Good debut album, obviously. Back when they were still metal for And, uh... And, we also got Out to the King. The first event, 7-Full TV, I got. And, once again, got this before I heard anything off of it. And, listened to it, and I was like... Yes! Yes! Banger of an album. I don't understand why a lot of people hate this. I can say it's a Metallica rip. I can understand why you say, like, oh, so this means word Metallica to rip off that. In some way, shape, or form, makes sense. But, it's called the Influence. Look it up. Got some bear tooth. Uh, disgusting. This is a great album. The only song off here I do not like is Sick and Disgusting. That song is Sick and Disgusting. And not in a good way. But, uh, hoping to see 
compared to the game. They were the best band of Wolf 2017, that's for sure. Uh, Disease. Got this for Christmas. And, oh, another CD that does not have the track listing on the back. What to heck? What record store does this shit? Nothing. Okay. That's alright. Alright, Being As an Ocean, Dear God. Being As an Ocean is one of my favorite non-metal bands. I just absolutely love this band. I cannot wait for their, their new album in September. I will review it. I will review it. I will review that. That is for sure. So, stay tuned for that in September. Alright, we're back with the classics. Black Sabbath self-titled. Everyone knows this album, you know? Of course, everyone knows it. The album that created metal. As well. So I don't really have much to say for that. And we also got Paranoid. Even better than that, that's for sure. But, uh, Paranoid, this song, the title track, Paranoid, is overplayed, let's be honest. But, uh, you know, Iron Man, War Pigs, Electric Funeral, all classics and bangers! You know what I'm saying? I guess I'll put that in a different uh, Alright, my favorite Sabbath album, Master of Reality. If this isn't your favorite Sabbath album, then that means you and I have different opinions. Okay. But, uh, yeah, man. This is hands down my favorite Sabbath album. Just. And definitely heavy. It was heavy for its time, you know? 1971, bro. Definitely, uh. Heavy for its time. But it's worth it because we got something good out of it anyway. Alright. Volume 4. A, uh. Banger. This was the. Uh, I really don't have much to say about this one, honestly. But uh, it's, a, it's a banger. And they call it Volume 4 because it's their fourth album. Or their fourth release, I shall say, because I wouldn't consider their self titled an album. I consider that an EP since it's five songs. But I don't think it matters. Alright. And now. Heaven and Hell, and Mob Rules. Count Blackrath, I don't know what you're saying, man. These two albums are great. But, you know, you're, you, we all have our opinions, and your reasons do make sense anyway. But, I think Dio was great on these, man. And uh, what's funny is, on Back of Heaven and Hell, I thought, when I first saw the back of the CD, I thought uh, Dio looked, eight, looked a lot like Ozzy, but I look at it now and I'm like, yeah, that don't look like Ozzy. Rip in peace, Dio. Don't you, don't you feel that? Mob Rules is a great album. Nothing. That was it for uh, Sabbath. I used to have Sabotage, but I think I gave that to my uncle. Shit. Alright, let's get on. Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet. Bon Jovi's my favorite non-metal 80s band. The band that introduced me to music in the first place, actually. Not this particular album. Uh, that's probably for a whole other video. It is for a whole other video. But, I still love this album. I don't listen to it anymore. But, it still will always have a special place in my heart. Um, have a Nice Day. This is another great Bon Jovi album. This actually might be my favorite album by them. I don't know. It's, it's one of them, that's for sure. It's up there in my top three Bon Jovi albums. Oh, maybe even my second, anyway. But, alright. Bring Me the Horizon, Sempaternal. I have That's the Spirit too, but pretty much the same uh, situation with Glory Days. Didn't like it. Um, I messaged, uh, I texted a couple of my friends to see if they wanted the CD. They were like, one was like, oh, I already had it. And then the other one was like, nah, I don't, I don't like this album. And I'm like, fuck. I wanted to get rid of it. But, this is going to sound funny to you guys, but this album actually introduced me to Metalcore. Shadow Moses was the first Metalcore song I ever heard in my life. I was like, wow, I've been missing out on a lot. A lot. And no, that was in like, sixth grade, so, uh. Yeah, I wasn't too experienced with metalcore. 
I was experienced with metal, that's for sure. Pull up, metal putting up so much. Bullet from my Valentine, Fever. This album is a banger, although every song on here is great except for Bittersweet Memories. I fucking hate that song. But that's also for a whole nother video. Yeah, Bittersweet Memories. I, uh, I can't stand that song. But Fever, Your Betrayal, A Place Where You Belong, Breaking Out, Breaking Down, that's. Man, love this album. Love it! Love it! Uh, Put that in a separate file. Alright, next, we have Deathcore, Chelsea Green, Ashes to Ashes. Here's a, something funny. Look at that. Look at this shit. Who does that? Weird. So you take it out and you're like, where'd it go? Then you'd be like, oh, found it. Okay. That wasn't funny, but who cares? I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, man. Chelsea Green is a great band. This is probably my favorite album by them. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen them twice, but they've never played Clockwork. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, seriously? You guys know better than this. And note, I saw them both with Alex and Tom. Both that worked for. Uh, Coheed and Cambria, I keep forgetting what this album's called. Good Apollo on Burning Star 4, Volume 1. Really good prog metal. Don't have much to say about it. I've heard it Welcome Home so many times, but I honestly, it's one of the few overplayed songs that I'm not really sick of. I don't listen to it like that often, but when I do, I just be like, yo, this is a really good album. Right, we got some thrash. Death Angel Act 3. This, uh, very underrated band in thrash metal, in my opinion. This is, uh, one of their, one of their first albums. 1990, I believe this came out. Yeah. Very good album. See, when I first heard seeing it this time, I was like, Yeah! Thrash me, bitch! Kind of Up next, we got The Dream Calls for Blood. Yes, I only have two Death Angel CDs, unfortunately, but I, I plan on getting more in the, the future. Uh, this is a such a great album, especially in thrash metal. Death Angel is hands down one of my favorite thrash metal bands, which is why I have CDs from them. This next one, an album that I uh, kind of uh, just have mixed feelings about now because I just, I don't know if I can really listen to this anymore because it kind of doesn't really bring back good memories at all. It doesn't make me think of memories anyway. But Death Clock, the Death Album. Really good Mellow Death. I think they're probably the band that introduced me to Mellow Death. Found these guys when I was in fucking seventh grade, which is hence probably the reason I do not listen to it anymore. Because there's a lot of albums. There's not a lot, but there's some albums out there I just can't listen to anymore because they bring back bad memories of middle school and shit. But again, that's also for another video. Alright, that's the classics. We got Dio Holy Diver. The only Dio album I really know, aside from the song We Rock, this is the only album by them I really know. Not too uh, familiar with the band that much, but, you know, it's a banger. Classic album. And, uh, but I'm I think Ronnie James Dio is starting to get talked about too much. Honestly, Disturbed, Indestructible. I can't really listen to this anymore. Well, not true. Actually, no. No, I can, I can listen to it still. Although I don't really listen to it all that often anymore, but definitely one of my favorite you know, metal albums, definitely. Disturbed is a great band. And we also got Asylum. I do not have the sickness. I'm not really sure if I plan on getting it. Because it's down with the sickness, man. I'm so sick of that song. No pun intended. But, yeah, this is uh, Asylum. One of their, uh, I guess one of their heavier albums, I guess. They've always been heavy. Except for the, the last album wasn't really that heavy, but, you know. Or one of the darker albums, at least. 
Okay, and last, Immortalized. A great album. I mean, not one of my favorite Disturbed albums, but it's definitely a manga. You know what? I should get back to listening to Disturbed. I don't know why I haven't lately. But I definitely gotta get back to that shit. Okay, these next bunch of albums are some I'll get some shit for, but I can care less. Oh. Five Finger Death Punch, Way of the Fist. This is one of my favorite albums of all time, man. Uh, still, like, I still jam to this a lot. So angry, so heavy. People call Five Finger a poser band. I don't really understand that. It's like, what are they posing as that isn't what they are? Stupid. But, uh, yeah, it's weird. But, uh, then we also got Where is the Answer? This, unfortunately, is, uh, the clean version, but I don't really care. You know, it doesn't really matter to me. But uh, this was the first album I heard in its entirety. Which even, I, I can, for some reason, I can actually still listen to this. Because, again, this is uh, something I listen to a lot in middle school, but I'm like, I, you know, I can still listen to it. You know, it doesn't bother me that much. Okay. American Capitalist. Tied with Way of the Fist is my favorite Five Finger Death Punch album, but this one brings back some memories of summer 2016, which was a good summer, I guess. 2016 was a very successful year for me because I graduated middle school. I went to my first work tour. I got to see Black Sabbath before they broke up. Um, well, I got a new phone, even though that wasn't till Christmas. And this, al this album, and listening to this album just brings back the good memories of 2016. Because the beginning of 2016, I was still in middle school. But like I said, graduated. But I didn't have to go anywhere. Like that. But, uh, yeah. That was something I listened to often in uh, the summer, too. Alright. Wrong Side of Heaven, Righteous Side of Hell, Volume 3. Oh, shit, don't stop it. I love this album. Burn Enough is probably my favorite song off of it because it's just. That was one of the songs that really turned me on to Five Finger Death Punch, and I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get this album. Oh my god. That song, man, it's just something that I listen to a lot when I'm not feeling in a. When I'm not, when I'm like, oh shit, when I'm feeling depressed. If I come home from a really bad day at school, and uh, plus. All the features, man. Marina Brink, Maria Brink, and Mass Cavalera, Jamie Jossa, Tech Nine. That was interesting. Next, Wrong Side of the Marshall Hell, Volume Two. Okay, album. Day of My Life is my favorite song off of here. The first song I heard from here, I think, was Wrecking Ball. Because at first I thought that was a cover, so I'm like, okay, I got, I got to hear Five Finger Death Punch. And I was like, oh, okay, that's different. But it's okay. But yeah, definitely my least favorite Five Finger Death Punch album. Uh, now we got... I have their entire discography, actually. Just pointing that out. Got Your Six. This album fucking slaps, man. One of the... Of course, one of the hardest albums from them, in my opinion. But definitely. And uh, probably their best artwork, too, in my opinion. I would say this album has. And this is also something that kind of brings back the good memories of 2016. A lot of mainstream metal is, like, brings back good memories for me, you know? And the last, And Justice for None Deluxe Edition. Great album. I do see why a lot of people hate it, but I love it. Although, to be honest, I really don't think it's on my top ten anymore, because I started, because like I said, I found more stuff this year from 2018 than they did last year. Because uh, nowadays, man, I'm I'm looking for mu looking for the I'm looking for new music like every day in my life. And I found bands that are better than that. But you know, okay. Foo Fighters, in your honor, I have no idea where the booklet is, but it really doesn't matter to me. But I really don't have much to, much to say about this. I really wish I had the color and the shape. That's okay. Best of You, that song, in my opinion, does not get overplayed. 
one of the few like really popular songs that are not overplayed. Definitely one that I love. And that's for Food Fighters, Wasting Light. I actually have not listened to much songs off of this album. I definitely gotta do it. I gotta get on with that shit. Alright, next we got From Ashes to New Day One and The Future. Or I should, I'll show these separately actually. So we got Day, day One. This was one of my soundtracks to 2017, both summer and school. Yeah, the memories of listening to this, man. When I found out Chris left the band, I was like, motherfucker. I wanted to shit my pants and die out this band. So, yeah, this was the last album to feature him, and I was just pissed. I was like, no. But, Danny Case was awesome on the future, this album. Uh, they definitely went heavier with this album. They're one of the few bands right now that are getting heavier. Because I think a lot of metal bands are getting, uh, I don't really, I don't really like to use the term watering down, but are, that's kind of what some metal bands are doing nowadays. Unless you're a hardcore band. Hardcore is getting heavier. A lot of other metal genres, well, metalcore specifically, I think is getting uh, a little mellower. Still kicks ass, but, you know. And the last two albums I have, Ghost Inside, Get What You Give, and Dear Youth. This one also had a sleeve, which is why you don't see the original artwork for it. But I promise you, this is Dear Youth. See? Dear Youth. Clearly Dear Youth. Like I said, I was dumb. I took the sleeve off and I taped it to something. This album, this is an album I listen to every August 7th and January 12th. January 12th is when my grandma died. January, August 7th is when my aunt died. And this, I listen to this album on that day all the time because this album's dedicated to Vigil's brother, Ryan, who died in 2010. And so I'm like, all right, why not? This is dedicated to the dead. I'll jam it in honor of the fam. But yeah, man, that was it for part one of my CD collection. I don't know when I'm going to film part two and part three, but, you know, it'll it'll happen before the end of time. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this. Um, you know, uh, if you didn't, that's fine, but you're not. I'm fucking this outro up. Whatever. Bye.